Now remember that adjusting entries are tweaks that you need to make to follow the revenue recognition and matching principles when there is a difference in timing between events and cash flows. Recall that the revenue recognition principle says that we need to record revenue in the period in which it was earned, not, necess not when the cash was received, and that the matching principle says that we need to put expenses in the same period in which the revenue they supported gets recorded. So ultimately, we care about when events happen in terms of our income statement, not when cash changes hands. Now, adjusting entries come in two primary categories. The first is deferrals, which is when cash flow takes place before the related event. Uh, and, and, and there are two types of deferrals. First, we have prepaid expenses, which are things that we've paid for in advance. These are assets because they reflect things that we'll get to enjoy in the future. The other category is unearned revenue, which reflects deposits that customers have given to us in advance. These are liabilities because they reflect things that we're going to have to do for somebody, uh, for the customer in the future. And the second category of adjusting entries are um, from accruals, which come up when events take place before the cash trades hands. We have accrued revenues, which reflect revenues that have been earned, but we haven't gotten the cash yet. And we have accrued expenses, which reflect expenses that have been incurred, but that we haven't paid for yet. Now remember that adjusting entries are only done at the end of an accounting period, right before you produce financial statements. In this case, we will need to walk through each of the transactions from Chapter 3 to see if there is an adjustment needed at December 31, 2008. So we'll basically be asking ourselves if something was used up. And so when I put these entries in my related T accounts, I'm going to actually put them in red. So if you look back to chapter three, transaction three, or chapter three, transaction three said that we had paid four thousand dollars for four months worth of rent on October first. This actually works out to be one thousand dollars per month. And so at December 31st, we've used up uh, three of those months. Therefore, we need to transfer $3,000 of prepaid rent to the income statement by debiting rent expense for $3,000 and crediting prepaid rent by $3,000. So I'll list this as transaction three star. Uh, we will end up debiting that rent expense for $3,000 and we'll credit prepaid rent for $3,000. And so I can stick this into my uh, T account and so I'll add in additional uh, $3,000 uh, in prepaid rent and I'll add in $3,000 of rent expense. And what this does is this ends up leaving us with $1,000 in prepaid left, uh, which makes sense because we only have one month uh, worth of, of rent left to enjoy. Now transaction six said that we had purchased $1,200 worth of office supplies. And if you take a look back to our problem, it states that a review of our office supplies uh, at the end of the year highlighted that $900 was still on hand. And so uh, what this means is that we must have used up $300. So in terms of transaction, what I'll list is transaction six star, uh, because we used up $300 worth of office supplies, we're going to debit office supplies expense for $300. And we're going to credit office supplies for $300. Now the problem also says that depreciation expense for the month of December was $1,500. Remember that depreciation expense is our way of allocating part of the cost of a long-lived asset to the income statement in line with uh, usage of that asset. So we always keep the original asset at, at, at historical cost in the uh, asset account and then any amount that's allocated to depreciation expense goes into a contra asset account called accumulated depreciation. So what I'm going to do in this case is record transaction 10 as a debit to depreciation expense 
for this $1,500, and I'm going to credit accumulated depreciation for $1,500. And in my T accounts, I'm going to add that in as a credit to accumulated depreciation and my debit to depreciation expense. Now we're also given that Flanders paid his employee Rod $500 in wages for the week of December 28th, but he actually paid those wages on January 1st of 2009. This means that as of 2000, at the end of 2008, the day that we're producing financial statements, we actually haven't paid Rod anything. However, Rod has earned four days worth of pay, so we're going to need to accrue for that expense. And so what we're going to end up doing in this case is we're going to debit wages expense for the $400 worth of wages that Rod's already earned, and we're going to credit wages payable for... $400 showing that we have the obligation to pay Rod as of December 31st. So we can stick this into our T account. So we're going to add another $400 in wages expense and we are going to credit the liability account wages payable. So now that I've, post I've posted my adjusting entries, it's actually time to prepare an adjusted trial balance. So I'm not actually going to walk through the calculations and the preparation um, because it's just carrying over the balances from T accounts. So this is going to be one of those things that uh, you're going to want to review on your own. So the next step is to close out all of our temporary accounts through closing entries so that we can produce our income statement. Now remember that temporary accounts are ones that are used for only one accounting period. And these are going to be revenues, expenses, and dividends, while permanent accounts are things that carry forward from period to period, also known as things on the balance sheet. I'm going to end up using blue to illustrate my closing entries in these T accounts. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to zero out all of our revenue and expense accounts and post the opposing entry to a fake account called Income Summary that we're just going to use temporarily. So any revenue accounts are going to get zeroed out through a debit to revenue and a credit to Income Summary. So since we, uh, in our T account, we have a total of $12,500 uh, in service revenue, we're going to be able to debit service revenue uh, by $12,500 to close that entry and we're going to have our corresponding credit to income summary for $12,500. And So the journal entry for this I'm going to call this uh, transaction C1 is a debit to service revenue for $12,500 and I'm going to use income summary to temporarily store that revenue that uh, was recorded during the period. Now expense accounts are going to have the opposite effect. We're going to zero out them through a credit to the particular expense account and a debit to income summary. So what I'm going to end up doing is looking to my T accounts and seeing which of my expense accounts are actually open. And so what I'll end up seeing is that I need to close out wages expense of $1,400, utilities expense of $500, rent expense of $3,000, office supplies expense of $300, and depreciation expense of $1,500.